So because we're not going to worry about adding anything manually, we're going to go ahead and move forward with different ways that we can fix this. So when you want to go ahead and you want to patch a small region like this, we're going to use boundary patch. You want to make sure that you turn off automatic edge chain. Now, if you leave this on, it's going to automatically try to go around certain areas and it's not going to pick up this small sliver that's missing here. However, if we turn it off, Notice that it is able to pick up some of this area. But one thing you might notice is that it's not grabbing these edges. Now there's a good reason for this. This edge or this top piece isn't combined with the bottom. Now it doesn't really know that the small sliver here is something that we want to grab. There are a few ways that we could get around this. We could stitch them together or we could simply select this face and delete it. And that way we have a little bit better opening to patch. So now if we go back to boundary patch, we can actually turn on automatic edge chain. And if we move this around, you see that again, it's trying to grab these faces. If we turn it off, it allows us to grab the top edges of each of these. And you really only need three edges in this case because we have parallel or perpendicular edges and they're all straight edges. So we, we really are lucky in this instance because it's very easy for us to patch. But once we're done, we're gonna say okay. And now we've created that top surface. You'll notice it's called quilt over here. And if we right click on it, we can turn off the translucent and notice that it's orange, like a normal surface that we would use inside Inventor. It's built properly. Let's go ahead and find errors one more time. We'll select all, say OK. And again, notice that it's not finding anything. Now, I do know that we have some overlapping surfaces here again. So what I want to do is I want to stitch and I'm going to stitch all these bodies together. Now if I select body instead of face, grab everything and say okay. Now we get some errors. Now we're, we're putting everything together instead of being a composite. We stitched it all together as one surface and this is where it starts to find those errors. So keep in mind that when you do composite or individual faces, it might not find some of these errors for us, but when you stitch them together, it's going to start to find things like overlapping faces. And you can select them here and notice that there's a little icon next to it and it tells us that this face is a problem and it gives us some options here we can delete the face and we can say okay and then see what we're left with so notice that when we delete that face now the entire side is open so that was not really a good way to approach this problem i'm going to control z and bring it back and i want to start with this top face now notice the top face is not causing an error because it's not overlapping like the side faces are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually delete some of this information. So I'm going to grab the top face. I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard and notice now that I can very easily see the overlapping faces I can select them and again, hit delete on the keyboard. I'll grab this one as well. And that gets rid of all the errors over here in the browser. Let's go ahead and find errors one more time. We'll select all say, okay, no more errors but we still know that this file isn't complete. We know that there's a hole in here. We also notice that there's a hole in this corner here. Now, unfortunately, the boundary patch tools or really the tools that you have available here are not good for patching this geometry. They're very good for patching flat faces like the top of this piece here, but it's not very good for fixing these corners. So in order to finish the rest of this model, I'm gonna finish repair. I'm gonna go into my loft tool Make sure that my option is surface and I'm going to go from this edge to this edge and for my rails, I'm going to use this one here and this one here. So the way that this works using these rails, it allows us to go from this top arc to the bottom arc and the rails in there are just simply guiding it from start to finish. They're not really needed in this case. Now what we don't have is tangency and that's what we need to go back and add so you notice that in the condition section we have edge one and edge two as our sections and then our rails we want to add the tangent condition two just to make sure that we have a nice smooth transition coming from this face and all the way around to this side now you could do this surface with some other tool options like the patch in this environment uh, it'll work a little bit better but i wanted to look at the loft tool because it's something that we've played with a little bit and this is another application for it I'm going to turn off the translucency so I can see that. 
And we're going to use the loft tool again for this area. So we're going to go to loft and again we're using looking at a, a surface and we want to select both arcs on the top and then click to add both arcs on the bottom. And notice that nothing is previewed here, but if we go to conditions, notice that we now see that green preview. We can say OK. And again, I'm going to turn that translucency off to make sure that we have the complete patch in here and everything looks good. So now we're going to stitch everything together. So most of it is together, but we need to add the fillet and the inside of this bore. We're going to apply and say done. And notice that this is still a surface body. It's this here and this piece here. Now this piece wasn't included in the original, even though we stitched it back inside of our uh, repair bodies. So let's go ahead and edit this stitch feature. Let's add this face and apply. And note that now we have a solid body. So it's converted that to a solid for us. We still have the surfaces in here that we could remove if we need to, but by completely fixing the geometry, in this case manually for some of it, we were able to turn this into a solid that we can now use. Now keep in mind that this process isn't necessarily needed. You don't always have to fix all the geometry, depending on what you need from the import, the references that you need. Uh, in this case, we're going to need this top face because it's going to be a reference for our LCD. And we needed the locations of the holes and, and obviously the PCB and any of this information that would be related to adding switches or if there's maybe a, an LED light for something that needs to blink for the user. So any of that stuff that we would need, you could make sure that it's okay or it's repaired. But again, you don't necessarily have to repair all this to make a solid. It's just a good tool to have in your toolbox.